Well, hello, everyone. This is the Educated Fan. My name is Brandon, and I am joined here by your co-host, my best friend, Andrew Moore. Today is Wednesday. How are you on this fine, fine day? It's a beautiful day outside today in uh, Northeast Indiana. We're not doing too bad. Uh, just like every other Colts fan, I'm on to Cincinnati. I want to forget about that trash uh, game that we saw this Sunday, but feeling good about this week, feeling good about this matchup. And uh, I'm excited to be back in Lucas Oil Stadium watching the Colts play some football. How's your week, man? Football. Play a little football. Um, my week has been good. Went, did a little traveling, went up to Grand Rapids, Michigan. Lovely place. Um, do you think I'll ever uh, get an intro figured out here? I need it to be a primetime intro when we come in, and I just haven't found it yet. You're just finding your... You just trying find to find my rhythm. Spot, man. I got, I'm going to find the sweet spot. But anyway... Every, every good host has a good I gotta, intro. Yeah, I got to have... They got to know I'm coming in, you know? Like, hey, there he is. Listeners, what do you want Brandon to say as the intro? Let us know. I'll take, I'll take $5 offers to fit in words and sentences. <laughs> into the show without Andrew knowing if you DM me. Um, so week six, right? Five, six, week six, week six. Colts are three and two. And we got some tigers coming to town. Our brothers in Cincinnati. Um, this is a game that I, I mean, it's, it's very winnable. Obviously the Bengals aren't very good. Uh, they're one, three and one. Got a rookie quarterback. I mean, we love him, but he again, he's a rookie quarterback. Question: uh, Is he the best rookie quarterback right now, or is Justin Herbert? Man, that's a debate. Uh, Joe Burrow's been putting up some good stats, but man, Herbert's looked Herbert's looked special. Yeah, um, I agree. But I mean, it's a perfect opportunity for the Colts to bounce back, um, come back home to Lucas Oil Stadium, um, possibly getting some guys back from injury that. Um, have been deeply missed. Hopefully, Costanzo and, and Darius Leonard can play this week. But uh, it's it's definitely a game that I think the Colts can get back on track. Maybe there there'll be more opportunities for the for the offense to get going. Um, and I think that's that's kind of where we should start today with our preview. Is is really can the offense get get back on track? And if you look at the defensive rankings and the defensive numbers, the Bengals aren't that great in some categories end of sentence um, <laughs> what you said the Bengals really aren't that great and you were you're trailing i said end of sentence i mean just <laughs> just cut it off right great. there yeah so if you go by um, looking at the defensive ratings they're they're one of the worst in the league at stopping the run um and that is what we need to do this week is get back to running the damn ball the Colts are three and zero when Philip Rivers throws for less than or has less than thirty pass attempts. They're zero and two when he has more than thirty. So we need a heavy dose of of Jonathan Taylor. We need a heavy dose of Jordan Wilkins. Uh, we need some some Naheem Hines sprinkled in there. Uh, this is the perfect opportunity for the Colts to really get back to to physical dominating football. Um, I think the offensive line has a chance to to really go out there and, and show what they're made of, um, especially if we can get Anthony Costanzo back this week. That would be a huge help to this line. Um, and I really think that's where it starts, up front and and making sure we establish um, establish the run. And, man, I Jonathan Taylor, you I think I think what was missed last week is Jonathan Taylor probably had his best game as a Colt last week. I agree. He was averaging damn near five yards a carry. Yep. And we just, we got away from the run because we got down by so much and we kind of needed to pass and get back into the game. So I, Jonathan Taylor, I think he's, he's primed to just keep continuing to get better. It seems like we, we talked about it before. The more carries that Jonathan Taylor gets, the better he, he does, the more he gets going. Yep. And there's been a couple times, man, where he has just been so close to breaking one wide open. Mm -hmm. And one one of these times, it's going to break. And what better time to do it than in front of Lucas Oil Stadium, um, in front of Colts fans. Um, and it's just a way to get that offense some confidence. So 
Um, I think the I think the running game is going to be huge, and I look for the Colts to really try to establish that early and 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 keep that momentum going throughout the game. Well, and I hope we do, and I think. Uh, if you look at the offensive line, they're probably pretty displeased with their performance last week. Um, they're definitely not happy about the, you know, the lack of run game that we appeared to have. Um, you know, and I think against, against a Bengals team, they got to come out and dominate. And I think they will. And I think you're exactly right. We'd mentioned this, you know, in our last episode, uh, Jonathan Taylor seems to be a guy who, needs to get in the rhythm and it just gets better and better and better as the day goes on similar to you know a Derrick Henry is the comparison I made again not style of running but in that aspect of their game right and and it's not like the Colts have I mean the offensive line maybe we're not used we're used to or we expect a higher level of play out of them sure but it's it's uh, this this stat kind of stood out to me today um I tweeted it or I retweeted it from the the account um the podcast account Jim Aiello said, according to Next Gen Stats, the Colts or Colts rookie running back Jonathan Taylor has faced a stacked box, which is eight plus defenders. And the box is kind of like that, that five to eight yard area um, from the line of scrimmage on for the uh, for the defense. So there's been eight plus defenders in that box, 27 percent of his carries, which is fifth most in the NFL. Now, last season. Marlon Mack saw stacked box only 12% of the time on his carries. And that was 39th in the league. Sure. So the Colts, Colt, our defenses, when they're facing the Colts, they know we want to run the ball and they're stacking that box and they're trying to make it. So, so we have to throw the ball. So Phillip rivers beats us with his arm and we don't just dominate. So I think that's, what's contributed to it and why we haven't seen such a dominant running game. It's not because I think we've got, I mean, we, probably have taken maybe a tiny step back, but I don't think it's, I think it's more that defenses are just loading up that box and making it. So we have to throw the ball and they're saying, if you're going to beat us, you're not going to beat us by running it down our throat. You're going to have Phillip rivers do it. And I mean, own good on them. That's, that's kind of smart considering how, how Phillip has played in, in at times this year. But I think that's why uh, we haven't seen such a dominant performance is because teams are, are loading up the box on us. It's, it's pretty simple. So, uh, but like, like I said, hopefully the offensive line can get back on track this week and we can start getting the ball more to Jonathan Taylor and it, it's going to happen sooner or later. One of those runs is going to break and he's going to go hit that home run. Well, let's talk about Philip rivers again, uh, for a minute. Don't, last week, the, the thing that I think has stood out to me now and listen to other people talk about it and whatnot. I mean, Philip, yeah, well, well, he does look like he's got a noodle arm right now. Um, I mean, the mistakes he made were mental for the most part. I mean, maybe that pick six, maybe five years ago, he gets that ball on a line out to T.Y. a little bit faster. Um, but And maybe there's no pick there. But, I mean, realistically, the decision was poor. The decision to throw into triple coverage when he was scrambling was poor. And no matter what Frank Reich says... The that two point, uh, geez, that safety is on him too. Mm -hmm. So, so I, what what are we gonna? We're not getting the big plays on top of that. You know, the game saving plays. He's not going out winning the football game in tight situations either. I think I think here's the thing with Philip Rivers. So we talked about it last week. Those those interceptions were bad, and and he knows that. He he said this week. He said. And you know, he left that time. podium pissed. He he did on Sunday, which I would be too. I don't blame him one bit. Should be. This week, uh, today, it was today when he spoke to the media. He said, you know, in the, in the two games we've lost, there's been four interceptions and a safety. That's on me. He knows. I mean, he's, he's a smart guy. Incredibly right. smart guy. He knows what he, he knows that it's on him. He knows he needs to be better. He knows he needs to make better decisions. And looking at the film, you can kind of see that it, it could have been on Sunday because he was getting pressured so much because it seemed like every other play Raven Clark was getting beat. There were times where he did throw it a little bit quicker than, than probably he had time for. Um, he probably could have slowed down just a little bit. Sometimes he could have stepped up in the pocket and made some better throws. Um, so I think that contributed to it. Um, but I also just think that he, 
he's been starting to panic towards the end of the plays. And, and if he can kind of get that under control and, and start playing the ball that he was playing against, like when we played the Vikings, um, like when the Colts played, played the jets, um, those are obviously his two best games. And and we've seen what Minnesota has been able to do. I mean, Minnesota, Mm -hmm. hell, they almost beat Seattle and Seattle's a damn good team. Yep. Um, so if he just, it's kind of like, he just needs to figure out, and, and take care of the ball because when he takes care of the ball, the Colts win. The defense has been phenomenal. Special teams have been phenomenal. When he takes care of the ball and we just do the, the offense just does their job, the Colts win. So I, I, and I think he knows that too. So look to see maybe I wouldn't say a more conservative Philip rivers, but a Philip rivers that, that maybe he just takes care of the ball a little bit better is a little more, is more smart with his decision-making. Um, and, and you mentioned the safety. I do want to talk about that. Now, when you look at the film, yes, Reich, Reich said that it was on him and we all kind of maybe brushed that off. When you actually look at the play, it was a terrible play call. This, yeah. this man calls a play that, I mean, they thought they had a chance to make a big play, but it was a very slow developing play. And you should know your players a little bit better to know that well, Raven Clark isn't going to be able to last very long against miles Garrett. Like he had all very, all game long. So it should have been, it should have been a different play call that's on Reich, but it was also on rivers. He maybe could have stepped up. He maybe could have known that where Jack Doyle was exactly going to be things like that. So I put it both on them, but I think the mate, the key this week is we just need to get to Phillip rivers to, to go be that game game manager role again, just take care of the ball, make those quick passes, um, get the Colts in the right positions and, and, and deliver strikes when they're available, not try to force anything. And that's not a bad thing. Like game manager no, is usually is. thrown away as a slam, but at the end of the day, when you got a, such a good team around you, if that's all you need to be to win football games, then I, I don't view that as, you know, a problem. Peyton Manning did it in his final year with the Broncos. I mean, he wasn't able to sling the ball around that year. I mean, it was obvious. And, you know, and he wouldn't want a Super Bowl just being a game manager, honestly. So, um, right. And, and the thing is, too, how many times have we said it on this podcast? We don't need Phillip Rivers to be MVP, Phillip Rivers. Nope. We just need Phillip Rivers to be consistent and to be a little bit better than what Jacoby Brissett was last year. The defense has obviously taken a step up from where it was last year. The special teams were not missing kicks every game. Now the special teams has jumped up Mm -hmm. a level. If Phillip rivers is just a little bit better than what Jacoby Brissett was at the beginning of last year, taking care of the ball, making sure he's making smart decisions. The Colts are going to get to where they want to get. They're going to be a playoff team. And I think they have every intention of being that it's just can can we rely on Philip rivers to do that and not be the one that's hurting us? Because in those two losses, it's from the outside, especially it's hard to not look and say that Philip rivers was the reason we lost those two games. Now we, as an educated fan, you know, there's more that goes into that. Especially week did, one, week one was right. a team but, loss, but Phil does play a big part of it in it. And, the, the Bengals are average against the pass. So we'll see if he can get going. Um, I think a lot of play action could be available. If we establish the run, get Phil into that rhythm and make it. So he's not the one that's having to bring us back in these games, because that's when we get in trouble. All right. Why don't we move it along to, um, you know, what you think the Colts need to do this week um, in order to be successful? Uh I think the main thing is uh, one, we need to get our playmakers more involved. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we were talking about it right before uh, the show. Jack Doyle and Mo Alley Cox had a combined three targets last week, zero catches. Those guys need to be more involved, especially Mo Alley Cox with the yep. way he's been dominating. Get the ball into his hands. Uh, we got the ball into T.Y. Hilton's hands more last week. It's a good start. He had, um, I think he had six catches for like 60 yards, something like that. Let's keep that going. Let's. And Nick Sirianni talked about it this week in his media availability. We we haven't been getting the ball to T.Y. enough. We need to start game planning more um, and really making that a focus. And I think that's, that's great. That'd be a good start. Um, and then on the defensive side of the ball, we got to get pressure on Joe Burrow. The Bengals offensive line is God awful. It is like circa 2012, 2013 Colts offensive line. Awful. Joe Burrow has been sacked 22 times in the first five games, 
22 times. That's, I think, tied for most in the NFL or the most in the NFL. It's up there. It's, a, it's up there. Now, this is prime opportunity for these Colts pass rushers to pin their ears back and go eat. Justin Houston, Danico Autry, DeForest Buckner up the middle. Um, even you could, this could be a game where, where Ben Banigou, maybe with his limited amount of snaps, maybe he's able to get something going. Um, Grover Stewart could be able to put some pressure uh, up the middle. So this is the time for those guys to get pin their ears back and go eat. They're going to have plenty of opportunities to get after Joe Burrow. And, and, and then the Bengals game so far, yeah, Joe Burrow has been putting up a bunch of good stats, but they haven't really led to wins because it's like one step forward, two steps back. He has a good play. And then the defense capitalizes because it is such a bad offensive line. So um, I think getting pressure on Joe Burrow is, is priority one. Joe Mixon is a great back. He's back there as well. So the Colts need to continue their ways um, from Sunday in the rush de- defense department. But the, the defense defense is is going to have a lot of opportunities to make plays this weekend, and that falls right into our strong suit. We have a, a defense that takes it generates turnovers, and and it really makes the best out of the opportunity. So especially if Darius Leonard comes back, Joe Burrow is going to struggle, right. I think, pretty bad. What what about the Bengals? Uh, I don't want to say scare scares you, but. What do the Bengals do that could hurt the Colts this week and actually put us in a situation where we might lose to the damn Bungles? <laughs> I think, I think for the Bengals, if if they're attacking the Colts, I think they need to do the same thing that the other teams have been doing. They need to really stack that box and and put it in Philip Rivers' hands. I mean, that's so far that's been the recipe to to winning the game against the Colts this year. Is when Philip Rivers has to throw the ball. Um, when Philip Rivers is pressured, he's going to make mistakes. So uh, if, on that defensive line, um, I think they still have Geno Atkins. Um, if he can, thankfully, he's he'll be a, in the middle going up against Quentin Nelson. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's strength on strength right there. So that kind of neutralizes that. But if they could start getting pressure on on Philip Rivers, especially if Anthony Costanzo can't go this weekend, if LaRaven Clark is back there at left tackle, um, Philip Rivers could could go back to his ways how he was last week and start making making terrible decisions, throwing picks, and and then it won't be really on the defense, on the Colts defense, if they can stop him. It'll be the offense again putting this team behind the eight ball. So I think that's that's the number one area they're going to to attack probably, which Again, it's if they're going to stack the box, it, the Colts just need to impose their will and say, like, I mean, I don't care if you're going to stack the box. We're going to run the ball and we're going to run it well. So I think that's that's probably where, where they're looking um, as far as offensively. Um, you could have. I think offensively, Joe Burrow just kind of needs to be patient maybe not try to to be as aggressive because the Colts corners do like to do like to jump. I mean. Xavier Rhodes with those two picks. Kenny Moore has been all over. Julian Blackman's been making plays. It's going to be tough. It's mm-hmm. going to be very tough for Joe Burrow to make plays. But I think if he stays calm and he just takes what the defense gives him, right. the Colts will allow the dink and dunk down the field. So if and he's patient, there's going to be opportunities for him to make plays. And that's where I was going to go to was the dink and dunk and even the short short runs by Joe Burrow. Um, did you hear, I don't know if you were paying attention last week, I can't even remember how I saw it, but it was... Uh, some like mic'd up moments with Joe Burrow. And he said, he said, Oh yeah, I got rid of that ball. I ain't letting you guys hit me again. You see that oh, thing? I la- I he, s- he says, you see I me get hit that. last week. I ain't letting that happen again. <laughs> he said, I'm never letting that happen again. Uh, he was talking to the refs and they're like, yeah, if you're going to slide, like you need to get down, like and establish it. He goes, yeah, no, I'm learning. I'm learning. He goes, and again, he goes last week. Uh, yeah. Don't want that to go down again. That week he's, five he got weeks, he's five weeks in and he's already sick of getting hit. So I guess, I mean, that's a perfect opportunity. The Colts defensive line. Um, we've been getting pressure, but there's been a lot of times where we haven't been finishing. And right. I mean, Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield was able to get out of the pocket. So that's one area the Colts defensive line really needs to work for. And Joe Burrow is mobile. I mean, he can make yeah. plays with his legs. So um, if they're going to get there, they need to finish the rush. They can't just pressure and then allow him to escape the pocket, finish the play and get him down for a sack. So let's move along here to our prediction. First, I usually open up with this and forgot. Um, this week, the Colts are uh, minus 360 favorite. The over-under set at 47. Hammer the under. This is an under podcast. 
and I'm not ashamed. Um, Wait, what's under is 47 or lines 47 yeah. over under? That's high. 40. You know what? No. I'm taking the over. We cannot go ahead. Um, I'll take the over. You know what else you could take is Bengals plus eight might be a safe bet this week. Um, Colts minus eight this week. Uh, so my prediction is obviously Colts by a million. <laughs> every week um I'm, i hope i would hope we cover um cover the spread this week i'm not mega confident in that but um you know i do think we win the game i think this colts team is going to be is going to be upset i think they they want to bounce back i think especially the offense they're embarrassed i think they're they're sick and tired of of all this happening um, and I really, I really put this on the offensive line. Do I think Philip Rivers is going to go out there and throw for 300 yards and four TDs? No, I put this on the offensive line. I think they're going to step up this week. Um, I think Anthony Costanzo from today, when we talk about the injuries, but I think he's back. Um, and I think they set the tone. So I would say the Colts by, by two touchdowns. Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident in that. Um, and I, you know, me, I, last week I had that feeling that it was going to be a close game. And if the injuries didn't fall our way, Browns yeah. probably had the edge and I was right, but I, I am confident. I think the Colts will bounce back. I think Phillip rivers has, um, a, a very efficient game. Um, and I think we, we really make the focus of getting the ball into our playmakers hands. So I'll take the Colts and we go into the bye week forward too. I'm going to hope for a career day from Jonathan Taylor. Very well could happen against I'd like a to terrible, see, I'd love to see that terrible Bengals rushing defense. Yep. So, Andrew, why don't you run us through the injury list this week? Um, bigger than I thought it was, to be honest with you. Yeah, um, it was. It shocked me how many guys didn't practice today again this is only wednesday so it's it's going to change before the game on on sunday but we'll start with the guys that missed last week so anthony costanzo did return to practice today he's been dealing with that rib injury he was limited but it's great to see him out there already that's that bodes well for him playing on sunday so if no, no setbacks i think he does suit up uh darius leonard did not practice today um, last week, he, he was seen along the sideline with trainers. I don't know if he was seen today. Uh, the Colts did say that with all these guys we're going to mention, the Colts are monitoring them. So just because they didn't practice today doesn't mean they're out. Um, Reich said for most of them, it's it's too early to tell. So, But Darius didn't practice today, hopefully with a groin injury. Um, I mean, hell, Bobby Okariki and Anthony Walker played pretty damn well last week in, in Leonard's stay, but you obviously want – the, the leader and the best player on your defense back. Um, and then let's go down the list here. So Mo Ali Cox is dealing with a little bit of a knee injury. He did not practice. Um, Justin Houston, um, he's been dealing with a, um, Old uh, man. a little bit of a, of a hip injury, but he, he spoke with the media this week and he said, uh, I'm feeling good. I'm going to be good to go on Sunday. So would Justin Houston say that? I trust that. Uh, Danico Autry, he left the game for a little bit with an ankle injury, did return and finish the game out, but he didn't practice today. So maybe some maintenance there. Julian Blackman didn't practice. He's got Same a little bit there. of a groin. Um, he said, he said that he's feeling good. He is still working with the trainers. Again, another one, the Colts are going to monitor, um, Trey Burton had his normal rest today. And, uh, finally Jordan Wilkins, he had a little bit of a calf issue, but he was limited. Doesn't seem that serious. He should be good to go for Sunday, but I think I blacked out when you talked about Darius Leonard for a second. He did not practice. I would, I would expect him to play this week. Would would you, is that where your head's at? I, I think so. Um, he was close to practicing last week. So again, it's, it's also fluid and, and Reich hasn't really been coming out and giving much info on it. Um, he was, so, and he was working with the trainers last week, really testing it out. So I think he has a definitely has a better chance of playing this week than he did at all last week. So I think he's close tomorrow will probably be a big indicator. If he's out there, even in a limited participant role. Um, I think he, I think that's bodes very well. Um, and then one other thing, these guys aren't going to be playing this week, but, but Michael Pittman was out there at practice, at least watching, didn't have a boot on, didn't have a limp, no crutches. So he's looking real good. Um, Sources are, are are telling the Colts media that that it looks like he's 
probably will be good to go coming back after the bye week. So uh, Pittman could return against Detroit. And Kaboko Ture was out there working. He wasn't in practice. He was off to the side with the trainer. But that's another good sign. When you start seeing these guys out there on the practice mm-hmm. field, even if they're not practicing, it's a good sign. So Ture very well could be back against Detroit. So that, that defensive line would get another speed rusher that that would definitely help getting home and getting more sacks. So those sure. two great signs for both of those guys on, on coming back possibly after the bye week. And on Pittman, uh, I did get a tidbit of information from my uh, medical staff uh, where I get my medical information this week. Oh, yeah. um, I was explaining to Paige about <laughs> Pittman's uh, injury, I guess we could say, or condition. I don't even know if you'd call it an injury, right? But um, it is an injury. She did say that, you know, there is a possibility of that coming back too. you know, that happening again. She did, I don't think she was right. mentioning it was an increased, you know, highly increased chance or anything like that, but definitely something to, you know, keep an eye on. That's why the Colts wanted to look at it and make sure it got taken care of right away because yeah. the longer it goes, the more chance it could, it could get infected. It could cause nerve damage. It can come back. So it's a good thing that they took care of it that yeah. night when Pittman noticed that, that something wasn't right. So Good signs there um, on the injury front. So we'll uh, we'll have to see. Hopefully we get Leonard and Costanzo back. That would certainly increase our chances of, of having a good day on Sunday. Yes, it would. Uh, other Colts news. Colts sign cornerback. Has this guy kind of come on and off the practice squad a couple times? Christian and Angulo. Yep. Uh, to the practice squad and release linebacker Jonas Griffith from the practice squad. Yeah, he was the guy that you said last week. Well, he was on for two days and got released, so he's back already. Um, but we <laughs> go on Thursday. Yeah, I think with Jonas Griffith being uh, released, it shows the Colts are getting a little bit healthier at linebacker, which is is good to see. So, uh, yeah, I think that's it's, it for the Colts news and Colts win this week. Colts Colts win. I think it's going to be a good week, and let's roll into the bye week with some momentum. I would like to go into the bye week four and two. That's a lot better than going into the bye week three and three. Um, so let's move along to games around the league. Uh, we did have a few games since our last episode, including Seahawks beating the Vikings twenty-seven to twenty-six. Um, I could, I, I don't know why in the hell the Vikings decided it was a good idea to go for, go for the touchdown instead of selling for a field goal. I think they were wanting to get that first down so they could run out the clock. But yeah, I probably would have took the field goal and then may at least do have been a tie to go to overtime. But I mean, hey. the, at the worst, they would have been tied. Like that would yeah. put them up eight. But yeah. they, they, I get, you know, what's his face? Their coach, um, Mike, Mike Zimmer. Zimmer. There we go. Um, he basically said, basically said, I was trying to put the nail on the coffin. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I wanted, I, I knew that. Russell Wilson was on the other end, and he could come down, score, and get a two-point conversion if he wanted to. Um, you know, there's a strong possibility, so he was just trying to put it away. It didn't work out. Seahawks beat the Vikings um, by one. Saints beat the Chargers by three in another very close upset um, situation. Um, was kind of surprised that the Chargers didn't pull that one off. Justin Herbert is going to be special. He's, That's what I good. gathered from that game. He's He's good. He, so young he's only in his first couple starts but man he's out there just making unbelievable plays uh the kid is incredibly smart and he's only going to continue to get better so i'm a huge fan of justin herbert at this point i agree titans bills wow what a shock 42 to 16 titans win against the buffalo bills well when you get extra practice you know off on some high school field when you're not supposed to be seeing each other that that definitely helps Man, Titans look good. I, it's, it's one looked, week, so you don't want to put night. too much. Yeah, you don't want to put too much stock in in just one game. Yeah, but the Titans look good, and that that stretch after the bye week where it's Baltimore, Tennessee, Green Bay, Tennessee, not going to be a fun stretch for the Colts. It's going to be tough, right. to come out there maybe five hundred. I it's Tennessee looked good. Um, I saw I saw somebody tweet that. Uh, might have been even Trey Wingo, where all these all the players throughout the NFL should be asking why we're why the hell are we practicing when the Titans haven't practiced and they go out and do that. But um, yeah, Titans they surprised me last night. And Derrick Henry had his uh, throw out the threw Josh Norman out the club last night, just tossed him like a freaking rag doll. Mm-hmm. That was big man making a grown man move there. Uh, so. 
my brain stopped working. The Titans, who typically play down or up to their opponent's level, don't often win by such a large margin, so I was really impressed there. Um, it's also their first game this year that was not close, uh, and it's the first team that's worth a damn that they've played. So a little extra shock there. That's their best win against the best team they've played. So uh, they're definitely going to be a problem. So let's move it along here. Pick them standings. You hear that, Andrew? They're cheering for me. That's the crowd going wild for Brandon taking the lead this week. 10 out of 14 picks, right? That's 55 out of 77 with a 71% straight up bet percentage against Andrew's measly eight wins last week. That's not, you You barely got half the games. Wasn't a good week for me. Barely got half the games, right? 53 out of 50 or 77, 69%. So I've got a nice. two game lead. Nice. I've got a two game lead on Andrew. Um, yeah, I need to, I had a huge lead on you and I've been kind of crumbling. So I gotta, I gotta get serious this week with my picks. Gotta make a comeback. Can't uh-huh. let you get too far ahead. Oh, and I'm going to move it along this week. I'm just going to tell you right now, do not bet on this first game. Do not bet on Thursday <laughs> night football. Well, I, I have there, no I idea. There is a Thursday night football game because the Thursday night game was supposed to be bills Isn't chiefs, it? but bills chiefs got postponed to Sunday because of the Bills Titans game being Tuesday. So yeah, I don't who know knows? If we have Thursday night football this week. I don't know either. I'm looking at I'm trying to see on here. No, it doesn't even show me. I don't know. Do not bet on the Falcon Falcons and the Vikings. Um I'm gonna pick the Vikings. Oh shit, I don't know. <laughs> I think I think the Falcons are the better team. And you got the whole Dan Quinn firing. You know what? Falcons are going to win. That's my pick. I, I am taking the Falcons as well. Um, I think they're they're in the same position that the Texans were last week after Bill O'Brien got fired. Um, they're going to come out and try to get a, a win for their new coach, which we will talk about who that is in a bit. But, yeah, I think, I think Falcons take it. Um, it's going to be a close game. Definitely don't bet on this game, but Falcons I wouldn't get touch this column. with a 10 foot pole. Um, next game, Bears versus Panthers. Somehow, some way, the Bears are listed as a slight underdog, and that's because of what's been going on in, um, you know, North Carolina. Uh, the Panthers have been rolling. You know, Matt Rule's offense seems to be getting the job done, but I don't think that offense is better than the Bears' defense. So I'm going to have to go with the underdog. I have been burned so many times by the Panthers this year. I'm going Panthers. I think their defense <laughs> is going to give. Uh, I tried to tell you last week. Yep, yeah, you did. I'm going to give big Richard Nick Foles. The Panthers are going to give him problems. So I'm going Panthers at home. All right. And then obviously Bengals Colts. We both got the Colts. Uh, Browns Steelers. I think the little Browns hype train stops this weekend. Yeah. Again, I think this game's actually tougher than than what it realizes. I'm going to go with the Steelers, um, but I think it's a very close game, especially since the Steelers didn't play that well against the Eagles last week. Um, but it's an AFC Chase North Chase Claypool matchup. did. Ch- yeah, Chase Claypool went off. But, um, yeah, I, I'll take the Steelers. All right, moving along to the Patriots and the Broncos. Do we know if Cam Newton's playing? So it Cam doesn't Newton- matter, but do we know? Cam Newton was taken off the COVID-19 list today and he will practice tomorrow. So Patriots like will be beating back. the Broncos. <laughs> I am taking the Patriots as well. I think Cam Newton uh, has a pretty good game. Uh, this next one's another one I wouldn't bet on. I don't, maybe I did. I don't remember. Um, but Lions, Jaguars, uh, very unpredictable teams right now. Um, but it looks like I think the Lions are coming off of a bye. So I'm going to give them and Matt Stafford the edge over Minshew. Yeah, I'm going Lions as well. Um, I I think that, like you said, they're coming off a bye. Uh, the defense for the Jags hasn't been great. Um, they gave up quite a few points to Deshaun Watson. And um, I think the Lions get back. Well, I shouldn't say back on track, but I think they get a win in Jacksonville. Texans, Titans, uh, after a short week, you know, you may, may worry a little bit about the Titans, especially because the Texans did have a better game last week, but I just I still think the Titans win that football game convincingly. Oh, man, this one, again, I think this one's tough. I think the Texans are going to play Tennessee very well. 
Uh, but do do they have enough? Because that Titans team looked good. But I just, I don't know. I don't know if I could see the Titans going 5-0. and You know what? I'm going Texans. I need to start making some moves. I'll go Texans. I think they and Andrew the falls down another peg. I think I think the Titans try to over or they overlook him, and Deshaun Watson has some magic in him. The football teams heading to New York to face the Giants and Alex Smith. Not only is Alex Smith going to be back out on that field, which by the way I've found out that Kyle Allen uh, did not get benched; he got hurt, but. So as long as uh, Kyle Allen's not, you know, back to full health and starting and Alex Smith is the guy on the field, the Washington football team is going to beat the New York Giants. I'm going Washington as well. Um, I do think that Kyle Allen is still the starter, though. I think Ron Rivera said that. So we he might said not that see if he... Alex Smith, but but I think Kyle, I think the uh, the Washington football team, while they're not much better, I think they are a little bit better. Is than Kyle the Allen healthy, though? I that I don't know. That's the problem. That, that I he did say if Kyle Allen's healthy, he's going to be the starter. But I don't know off the top of my head if he is healthy. Right. So we'll find out. Either way, Washington football team, uh, Ravens, Eagles. I think the Ravens saw the Eagles, you know, test the Steelers last week, and they're going to be ready and not allow that to happen. Yeah, I'm going Ravens. Um, I I just don't think they're as good as the or I think the Eagles aren't as good as the Ravens and. Lamar Jackson's probably going to run all over that Eagles defense. Jets, Dolphins, uh, Dolphins. Yeah, Tyler, you're getting one of those uh, rare times where I pick the Dolphins, but the Jets are terrible, god awful, so bad. Um, Packers, Buccaneers. This is only a one point spread right now. One point spread, which I think is insane. The Buccaneers coming off the dumbest thing Tom Brady's ever done in his career. Um, and the Packers coming off of a bye. Aaron Rodgers is on fire. Mm-hmm. Packers. Yeah, I'm going Packers. Tom Brady and the Bucks fall to 500. Yeah, go ahead, and bet, go ahead and bet your life savings on the Packers. I um, would not do that. <laughs> Rams 49ers. The Rams have looked good, and they're going to carry on with that. Yeah, 49ers quarterback situation is not good. Um, I think the Rams pretty decisively will win this one. Were you aware that uh, Jimmy G was coming off that injury, and they are? Yep. Um, I've heard people talk about it. He did not look himself. It, they do believe that um, his struggle over the weekend, this weekend, was due to that injury. Um, so maybe not quarterback controversy in, in San Francisco, but – Definitely some problems in San Francisco. So, yeah, Rams are going to win. Uh, Chiefs, Bills. The Bills are going to want to bounce back, but not a fun team to have to bounce back against. Yeah, I think the Bills are – or their defense is going to definitely look a lot better. I still am going Chiefs because I don't see Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs losing two in a row. Not a chance. Um, so, I think they I think they roll probably by a touchdown or 10 points. Yeah, stay far, far away from this next one as well. Um, and I just to be clear, Chiefs, um, Cardinals, Cowboys, Dak Prescott out for the season, but Andy Dalton, I think, is a talented enough quarterback to keep Dallas moving up. And I, I feel like Dallas is moving up right now, even though they struggled with um, the Giants. But I don't know, the Cardinals are. Back and forth on me right now. I'm probably going to go with the Cardinals. I'm going Cardinals. Um, I think Kyler Murray is going to have a huge game against that god terrible defense. Dallas defense. Um, it doesn't make sense that that defense is that bad. Who's going to guard DeAndre Hopkins? Nobody. Nobody on Dallas can guard DeAndre Hopkins. So I think Cardinals will win. And I don't really trust Andy Dalton to lead the Cowboys to a victory over anybody but really the the terrible teams of the league. So I think the Cardinals win. So we disagree on two again this week? Looks I like. I think so. Two two or three of them. Um, I had the Falcons. I You had the Bears. I had the Panthers. Something like that. I yep, had the, te- I the big two. one's going to be Texans and Titans. That's the, that's the big one. But I'm going to try to make a comeback, at least tie it up this week. Yeah. Good luck. You're not going to. Um... <laughs> So, injuries around the league. Browns, cornerback, Greedy Williams. 
did he's not the, he he didn't uh he's not the one that took back that pick six, is he? No, he's not. Okay. What a name. Greedy Williams. Anyway, nerve tissue in the shoulder out indefinitely. Chiefs wide receiver Sammy Watkins hamstring to miss a couple of weeks. Uh I mean the Chiefs have no shortage of weapons. I'm sure they'll be fine. Uh Jets quarterback Sam Darnold still out with that shoulder injury. And Panthers defensive tackle Kawan short out for the season with a shoulder injury. Not not too many huge injuries. Um, Greedy Williams uh, definitely is the biggest one. Joe Dak Flacco Prescott, still clearly. Uh, yeah, Dak. Well, we talked about him last 20. week, but yeah. um, Sam Sam Darnold out. So Joe Flacco continues to start in in New York. Um, and yeah, like you said, the Chiefs plenty of weapons. Uh, I think Sammy Watkins might be missed a little, but hey, if you have uh, Michael Hardman on your on your fantasy team, might want to give him a start. Not a bad piece of advice there, Andrew. Oh, breaking news! Uh, uh, Nick Sa- Nick Saban has tested positive for COVID nineteen. Nick Saban. So Alabama, as they're going up against Georgia this weekend, that's a big game in the SEC. Oh my God! Not good. For I Nick just Saban. imagine Nick Saban as a guy who just shit talked everybody that's worried about covid and i just i just imagine nick saban's an asshole who hasn't been taking this seriously enough i don't know about that nick saban and i, mean, I don't know enough about him to 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 see that but i don't know and he's that's, that's, he's kind of old he is older than he appears he is dying that hair he's in his 70s nick saban's 70 years old nick he saban looks, is like he looks 58 Nick Saban is close to Bill Belichick's age, dude. He looks 58 years old. Uh, let's see here. Nick Saban's got to be the ha- most handsome right. man on planet Earth if he's 70-something. I I was wrong about his age, but I was right that he's the same age as Bill Belichick. They're 68 years old. Gee, many Christmas. Yeah. All right. Well, Bill Belichick looks 68. <laughs> um, Moving along. Yeah, you're not wrong there. There we go. Nick Saban, <laughs> COVID. Uh, Atlanta Falcons named defensive coordinator Raheem Morris the interim head coach after the firing of Dan Quinn. I think he's pretty respected um, among the, the Falcons players. Um, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a difference. I, still, I think they win this weekend just because Dan Quinn is out, but I still think the Falcons will probably end up with a top five pick in the NFL draft. That's not good down there in Atlanta. Uh, New York Jets release Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, so that was wow. the big, that was the kind of the big news of the week in I did not know transaction that. wise. So they've been trying to trade him for a while, obviously, and he wasn't happy. Um, they even said they'd be willing to take a late round pick, but with Le'Veon Bell still guaranteed six million dollars this year, there was no way that they were going to be able to find a trade partner. So they did release him, and now he's free to sign wherever. So for and that's just a signing. I mean, New York still has to pay him that six mil, no New matter New what. New York still still has to pay him the six mil. Now, if if a team signs him. Um, even for the, so if they sign him for the minimum deal, the jets would just have to pay, um, up until like minus this, that minimum deal. So if someone, some team pays him a million dollars, the jets would have be on the hook to still have to pay him 5 million, but Got it. where do you, where do you think he signs? If you had to take a guess. New England, you're on the spot here, New England. I could, I could see it. I think he tries to go to a, uh, a team that's the Steelers, a champ <laughs> Steelers. <laughs> I think the Steelers are plenty happy with James Conner. I think he does Kansas go to a City. team that, that has Super Bowl aspirations though. Um, maybe Seattle, maybe Indianapolis. Yeah, that's not happening. Losing Marlon Mack. Dude, I don't think Le'Veon Bell is bad. Le'Veon I think Le'Veon Bell lot. got paid and got to the Jets and went, you know what? I forgot winning's fun. This sucks. I don't I don't think Le'Veon Bell was at his best in uh New York. I think he still has some good football left. Listen. Who's the man Listen making the decisions in Indianapolis? 
Um, His name's Chris Ballard. Oh, yeah, that guy. What's the number one thing that Chris Ballard says about bringing guys in? Uh, If I can sign them for absolutely dirt cheap, why not? Character. Yeah. This was this was my main gripe. You're telling me Le'Veon Bell, the rapper, Bell. doesn't have character, Andrew? This was my main gripe against Le'Veon Bell when all these Colts fans were spewing garbage on social media to sign him, sign him, sign him. No, no chance in hell Le'Veon Bell signs with the Colts. He is a locker room cancer, as seen by everything since he left the Steelers. Bears. You know right. The Bears. I don't think the Bears have Super Bowl aspirations. He's going to go to want to go somewhere where he can compete for a Super Bowl title. Maybe it's Pittsburgh. We'll see. I would piss myself. I would just absolutely love that move. Um, we got to get moving here. Patriots quarterback Cam Newton activated from COVID nineteen list. Just said that earlier. Uh, New Orleans Saints are considering playing home games at LSU as New Orleans continues to prohibit fans from attending games. Yeah, I think the that'd be a good that'd be a pretty good move to get if they're not going to allow fans in the stands. And it, I mean, pretty much wherever it's been taking place throughout the country. I mean, there's been plenty of fans at Colts games, and I haven't heard of any anything bad going on. So if they're going, if LSU's going to allow them more power, well, you to never will. Part. Though, I mean, you never will. You would though, because they they would stop allowing fans if that happened. I mean, even in Pennsylvania, where where the mayor would say it in Philadelphia and the and in Pittsburgh, no fans. Now they're starting to allow fans. So, um, but yeah, hell, good for the Saints if they're able to get fans uh, for their games moving forward whether it's lsu or new orleans tough news for your fantasy football team broncos running back melvin gordon cited for a dui and speeding late tuesday not good <laughs> tough broncos had, i can't remember the last time the broncos had good news i, I mean, man it's been a long we're signing peyton manning <laughs> well i mean they won the super bowl after peyton manning so i guess yeah. that's good news but this season injury after injury after injury and then players getting duis not good in denver no pro bowl game in 2021 i'm pissed that, that was announced today i'm pissed so they're still going to vote and they're still going to announce the rosters now this is how the nfl put it in their release that the 2021 pro bowl is going to be reimagined in a different way. <laughs> what kind of headline is that? Reimagined. They said there's going to be uh, engaging virtual activities for fans with with the Pro Bowl players. Just name the freaking rosters and be done with it. Yeah. No one cares. Um, no one cares. 2022 Pro Bowl is going to be played in Las Vegas. Las That's fine. Vegas. Uh, New Orleans to host the 2025 Super Bowl instead of 2024, as the date in 2024 could conflict with Mardi Gras. Wow. That would be quite the week <laughs> for the city of New Orleans. Uh, location of 2024 party. Super Bowl still to be determined. I can't believe they're going to let a Super Bowl occur in that stadium again. They always have the Super Bowl in New Orleans every seems like four or five years it's always in new orleans so i feel like after the whole lights out incident yikes hey miami and new orleans all the time but we got this yeah. new la stadium vegas uh the super bowl in new york or in indy was really awesome that the new york hey, giants won 2024 is open come on down to lucas oil for that state for God, that i would super love bowl. that i would love that come on that's, let's do it it's one of perfect. the best stadiums in the league absolutely let's do it all right it's that time boys and girls where you can come find out how to lose your money with a little bad beats with me brandon all right so i did mention a couple of games i just absolutely would avoid this week let's go ahead and start with those do not I repeat, do not bet on the Arizona Cardinals game or the Atlanta Falcons game. Would not recommend. Um, but let's move along with the things that you should bet on. We're going to start off with an underdog of the week. Chicago Bears at plus 106. Take them. Money line. Um, Washington football team plus 
125. Hilarious line. Take them. Um, I'm going to go. I've got some this week, Andrew. I'm taking some of the underdogs, but with the points. So we got okay. Eagles plus seven and a half against the Ravens this week. That's at Ooh. minus 108. Take that. Uh, Detroit Lions. I guess I did bet on this one. Um, Detroit Lions against the Jacksonville Jaguars at minus 186. LA Rams minus three and a half points against the 49ers. Go ahead and hit that. I Okay, so I did bet on the Falcons. <laughs> <laughs> plus, I, put, I, I got Falcons plus three and a half. Um, seems like a safe bet. Either they're going to win or it should be close. Um, Steelers minus three and a half against the Browns. Go ahead and take that one, that spread. Miami Dolphins minus nine and a half. Do it. Um, Green Bay Packers minus one point. Yeah, go ahead and hammer that. I, I mean, just that doesn't make yep. any sense to me. Good luck. I'd do that. Um, gives you a little bit, bit of a boost in the odds. Uh, Tennessee Titans money line against the Houston Texans, Kansas City Chiefs money line against the Buffalo Bills and the New England Patriots are going to get that win against the Broncos at minus 400. So you don't want to bet on that on, on your own. But if you do want to parlay all those boys together, oh, man, you're looking at it plus one hundred nine thousand six hundred ninety nine on a 12 pick parlay. I have wagered $1.21 with the potential to win $1,328.58. This is the week, boys. This is the week. Boys and girls. We like girls that listen to the show, too. I don't know if any do, but... All right. That's it. And I wrapped her up right there with the uh, music. Look at that. So that's week six. Bets of the week from me. No bad beats this week. Only good beats. We're going to let them roll. Going to hammer them. Might even bet some of those individually. You know, stop being such an asshole. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it this week, guys. Uh, week six is about to begin. I am really upset if there's really no football tomorrow. Can Let's check this. I Today. unfortunately do not have a lock NASCAR bet this week to win you money. But hey, I won a great amount of money last week betting on chase elliott 300 dollars. let's uh 300? let's win some money this week hopefully the chiefs don't mess up my parlay why like is this not sweet. giving me the option to look at nfl i'm pretty sure there's no game tomorrow night we're without thursday night football we are without thursday night football wah, 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 wah. There's too many pages. <laughs> All righty, guys. That's it for the week. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. Go follow us at the educated fan. That's at T H E E H D U C A T E D F A N. Boom. You hear me spelling things, Andrew? Um, smart, go follow us. Very smart. Re- retweet our stuff. Post your stuff, our stuff to your story. Like, comment, share our stuff. Anything like that, we'd appreciate it. Go like, or go rate and review our the podcast itself on iTunes. Um, other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Go Colts. Go Colts. <laughs>